स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Last time we looked at permutations and some of their properties under composition. Those properties taken abstractly give the axioms for a group. So a group uh, consists of two pieces of data. The first is a set G and the second is I will denote it by dot, it is a binary operation. Okay, a binary operation is just an operation which takes two inputs and gives out one output. So you can think of it as a function from g cross g to g. It takes x comma y as inputs to elements of g and spits out x dot y. Okay, these this set and this binary operation need to satisfy the following axioms, which we saw last time. So the first axiom is associativity, which says that if you have three elements x, y, z in G, then you can apply this operation dot to them to get a single element in two different ways. Uh, one is okay, first you take x dot y and then you dot that with z. The other is you take y dot z and then you take x dot whatever you get when you do y dot z and associativity says that these are the same. The second axiom is the axiom of the identity. So this axiom says that there exists um, element of g which I will denote here by id such that x dot identity is equal to x and that is also identity dot x for all x in g. So, what we are saying is that this element is such that you take any element in g and you multiply it either on the left or on the right by identity then you will get back that element. And the third axiom is the axiom of the inverse. So this axiom says that uh, for every element x of g, there exists another element x inverse of g such that x dot x inverse is identity and that is the same as x inverse dot x. So these are the axioms for a group. Let us look at some examples. So we have already seen one example last time namely Sn the set of permutations of on n letters which is nothing but the set of bijections from the set uh, 1 dot 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 n to 1 dot to itself and this is a group under the operation of composition. Another example a uh, really simple example which you would have encountered in primary school is the group of integers under addition. So this uh, is the set of all integers positive, negative and 0 and uh, this is the operation of addition. So you, you, you know that you know integer addition has the associativity property. Um, in addition the inverse is really uh, the number minus x x plus minus x. Oh, firstly, uh, we need to talk about the identity axiom. So, what is the identity in the integers? So, in the integers, the identity is the element 0. x plus 0 is equal to x, which is 0 plus x. Right? So, the group theoretic identity in the integers is 0 and the inverse is actually the negative x plus minus x is equal to 0 which is minus x plus x. 
ओके सो द इंटीजर्स एंड एडिशन फॉर्म अ ग्रुप लेट मी गिव यू अ स्लाइटली मोर इंटरेस्टिंग एग्जाम्पल एंड दिस इज यू फिक्स एन इंटीजर कैपिटल एन एंड यू लुक एट द ग्रुप ऑफ रेजिड्यू क्लास इज मॉड एन अंडर एडिशन so this is uh, the group of what is sometimes called clock arithmetic so um, every day in our clocks we use clock arithmetic that is if it's 9 o'clock right now then 4 hours later it's going to be um, 1 o'clock right because 9 plus 4 is 13 and uh, when you divide 13 by 12 the remainder that you get is 1 so this is the arithmetic of remainders modulo n so um, so in this uh, as a set this z mod n z is the set 0 1 up to n minus 1 is the set of all possible remainders that you can get upon division by n and uh, given two elements uh, x and y in this set x plus y is the remainder when x plus y as an integer is divided by n okay we do this all the time with clocks as i said so uh, in in the 12 hour clock arithmetic when n is equal to 12 9 plus 9 is 18 and uh, when you divide 18 by 12 The remainder is six, so nine plus nine is six in Z mod twelve C. And um, it's uh, uh, easy to see that zero is the identity here. Well, associativity is also very easy because ordinary addition has associativity, and then you're taking remainders. So um, you know. clock this uh, addition modulo n will also satisfy associativity um the identity element is zero and uh, what is the inverse so in this uh, zero is its own inverse i'll write it as minus somehow because we're using plus sign so the inverse of zero is zero the inverse of one is n minus 1 because n minus 1 plus 1 is n and when you divide n by n the remainder is 0 and the inverse of minus 2 is n minus 2 and so on okay and uh, let me give you a non example of a group take um the integers but instead of taking addition take multiplication this is not a group why well um does it have an identity so zero is not an identity for multiplication because zero into x is zero but the identity uh, axiom for the group says that zero into x should be x okay so maybe 1 into x is x that works except when x is equal to 0 in that case 1 in so when x is not 0 1 into x is x uh, when x is 0 also this is 0 okay so so it also has an identity so so the identity is one okay but uh inverse so let's look at inverse so what is the inverse of uh 2 for example so 2 into what is equal to 1 well there's no integer which if you multiply by 2 you will get 1 there is a rational number but there's no integer which if you multiply by 2 you will get 1 so it does not satisfy the identity uh, the inverse axiom so this is not a group okay and uh, 
Similarly, you can see that for example, Z mod 4Z under multiplication is not a group. Here I'm doing multiplication mod 4, which means I take uh, two elements and I multiply them and then I divide by 4 and look at the remainder. So in this, for example, 3 into 3 is uh, 9, 9 divided by uh, 4 leave the remainder of uh, 1. So 3 into 3 is 1 in Z mod 4. But here again, uh, there is uh, no inverse. For example, 0 itself does not have an inverse. Okay, so think about this. The identity here is going to be 1 because we are talking about multiplication. But no matter what you multiply 0 by, uh, you are not going to get 1. So this is also not a group. So now let us look at uh, some simple properties of groups that we can derive just from the axiom. So the first property is cancellation. What it says is that suppose you have uh, x, y, z, three elements of the group G and suppose x dot z is equal to y dot z. So let then x is equal to y. So let us prove this just using the group axioms. So what we know is x dot z is equal to y dot z. Now by the identity axiom we know that there is an element uh, which when multiplied by z gives the identity. So this is z inverse. So let us write that down x dot z dot z inverse is y dot z dot z inverse. And now we will use associativity. So this z inverse we have because of the inverse axiom and now let us use associativity. So we get x dot z dot z inverse is equal to y dot z dot z inverse. So this uses associativity and now what is z dot z inverse? Well, that is just identity. And uh, well, x dot identity is x and y dot identity is y. So what we have shown is so this uses the identity property. What we have shown is that if x dot z is y dot z, then x is equal to y. You can think of this as a cancellation rule have x an equation which says x dot z is y dot z then says so that you can cancel z on both sides and get that x is equal to y. Okay. Another simple property of groups is the uniqueness of the identity. In the axioms we just said that there exists an element identity of G which has the property that X times identity is equal to identity times X is equal to X for all X in G. But what I want to say is that there is exactly one such element. So suppose we had two elements, suppose identity and identity prime are both such that x dot identity is x uh, for all x in G and x dot identity prime is x for all x in G. Actually you do not even need this for all x in G even if there is one such x then what you get is x dot identity is equal to x dot identity prime and then you use cancellation oops not that way 
I want to cancel the X and you get identity is equal to identity param using cancellation. So there's only one identity in any group G. And here's a little exercise for you to prove the uniqueness of inverse. Okay, now uh, let me tell you how we can uh, store a group in a computer or uh, sort of more abstractly store a group. So, the examples we looked at came from some other branch of mathematics such as you know the theory of permutations or uh, you know uh, in the case of integers from number theory addition of numbers, addition of integers mod n, but more generally a group is just a set and uh, we need to keep track of this function g cross g to g. So, once we specify the elements of g and this function g cross g to g, uh, we have specified the group. And so, this can be stored in the form of a table. Let me do this with an example. Let us look at the group z mod 3 z. So, this has elements 0, 1, 2 and um, we know how to add these things. So, uh, I will write down this g cross g to g in the form of a table. So, we have going to have rows and columns both indexed by the elements of the group. So, this I will call this uh, maybe x and I will call this y and in this table I will store here um, x dot y. So, in this case it is going to be x plus y mod 3. So, um, 0 plus 0 is um, 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 0 plus 2 is 2, 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3 which is the same as 0 mod 3. 2 plus 0 is 0, 2 plus 1 is 0 and 2 plus 2 is 4 which is 1 mod 3. This is called the multiplication table of the group z mod 3. And uh, once you write down the multiplication table, you have completely specified the group because you have told us what dot does to any two elements. So, the multiplications table has rows and columns indexed by the elements of the group and the entries are the products of the elements x dot y. Okay, so, let us now try to see, uh, suppose we have a group G with uh, two elements. So, suppose G has two elements. So, here is the question what groups have two elements. So, one example you can think of readily is z mod 2 z uh, right. So, what, what, what is its multiplication table? 1 plus 1 is 0 ok, but suppose I have some other group with two elements. So, now suppose g is some other group with two elements then one of those elements is going to be the identity and the other element is going to be something we will we'll call it uh, A. Okay, so, this group is going to have two elements identity and A and uh, let us write down the multiplication table. So, I have to write down x dot y what can it be in this group. Now, we already know that I uh, you know identity into identity well is the identity uh, a into identity by the identity axiom is A. Uh, identity into A is also A by the um, identity axiom. What we do not know is uh, what is A dot A. Okay. Now, A dot A there are two possibilities either it could be A or it could be identity. So, let me just put down A here and see if this gives rise to a group. So, what I have is this binary operation which says that identity into 
identity is identity identity into a is a a into identity is a and a into a is a now question is does this operation satisfy the group axioms so it satisfies the identity axiom because anything into identity either on the left or the right is that thing itself but um, what is the inverse of a in this group so is there an element which if i multiply by a i get the identity well a into identity is a and a into a is also a so there is no inverse of the element a so we cannot have a over here okay so instead let's put identity so i am changing this a into a is identity and now uh, you can check in fact that this gives rise to a group okay so here i have two diff two groups of uh, with two elements they look rather similar right if instead of identity i put 0 and instead of a i put 1 then this table here just becomes exactly this table just by substitution of symbols so this is an example of group isomorphism So I have this function, let us call this, uh, let us not call this one g now, let us call it uh, z mod 2. So take this function f, uh, where f of 0 is identity and f of 1 is a. Then what we have is f of x dot y is f of x dot f of y. So this first x dot y is in the group z mod 2 and then this dot here f of x dot f of y is in the group g here and uh, this function is a bijection right. So, so what we are saying is that uh, these two groups are isomorphic. So, suppose I have two groups g dot and h um, just to distinguish it I will say star are isomorphic if there exists a bijection f from g to h such that f of x dot y is f of x star so what we had is that the in the example on the previous page we have that g is isomorphic to z mod 2 z and we denote this situation by writing g isomorphic to this. And what we have shown here in this example is that if you have any group with two elements then it has to be isomorphic to z mod 2 z. Okay, Let us try this with three elements. So suppose you have a group with three elements. So we have a group, it is going to have three elements. So we have identity A and B, identity A and B. And now I already know that uh, this row is going to be the same and here it is going to be the same because of the identity property. Now let me ask you, can A dot A be equal to A? Now the objection that we had earlier that A must have an inverse is uh, no longer valid because maybe you know you could have um, A dot uh, B is equal to um, identity. So question is can A dot A be equal to A? But by the cancellation, so I can write this as uh, A dot A is identity dot A. And then if I use cancellation, I get A is equal to identity. 
So, a dot a is equal to a implies that a is the identity. So, I cannot have a dot a is equal to a, I have to have a dot a is equal to b and uh, similarly b dot b has to be a, it cannot be b. And now, I have the identity axiom which says that uh, you know a dot something has to be identity. So, I better have identity here and identity dot a is equal to something dot a is equal to identity. So, I have identity here. So, if a group has three elements, then its multiplication table has to have this form. And this is exactly the same as the multiplication table of uh, z mod 3 z as you calculated earlier. So, if you take f of 0 to be identity, f of 1 to be a, f of 2 to be b, then you will get an isomorphism from z mod 3 z So, in this uh, lecture we have seen uh, what are the abstract, uh, what is the abstract definition of a group? Uh, it is given, it is as a set with um, a binary operation and this binary operation must satisfy the axioms of um, associativity, identity and inverse. Then we looked at some examples of groups, uh, some non-examples and we talked about when two groups are isomorphic.